Welcome. Uh, this time we are going to look at how we connect a TU56 deck tape drive to our PDP-11 computer. First is the drive itself. A closer look shows the magnetic heads here, 10 tracks at each head. And if we look inside, we see the motors, one motor per reel. We also see the capacitor that has been changed. The old capacitors were leaking. And over here we see the drive electronics and the power supply for the drive. And by the way, here you can see the leaky capacitors. The, those are 100 microfarads uh, bipolar electrolytics has been leaking due to old age. This is a vintage 1971 uh, drive, so now 46 years old. Some electrolytes are not as good as they used to be. However, the, the ones in the power supply were good as new. And over here, we have the actual controller. The TC11 controller, it consists of a huge number of small uh, modules called clip chips. This is the uh, Magenta series, M series clip chips. So to the right you have the bus interface logic and the, to the left is the rest of the logic of the TC11. Uh, green modules are over here are interfacing, analog interfacing modules. And these are actually the the modules that writes and reads from the drive heads. Five of these are used for this. And from the controller we have this white cable coming. This is the Unibus cable that goes all the way to the computer and is inserted in the, into the Unibus over there. And here you have the overview of the computer. So the two boards to the right, the big board to the right, are the CPU. And the six boards with green is the memory. And then the serial port board and also a quite modern SCSI board. Uh, and here is the good old PDP-1105 front panel. And of course we need a power supply for the TC11, so <laughs> this huge thing over here is the power supply of the TC11 and also giving the power to the uh, drive itself. Here we have uh, turned uh, the other side around on the TC11 controller and you can see the um, all the lights to the right and the big wire wrapped backplane here with all these connections that makes up connects all the logics inside the controller you don't want to mess with this the good thing is that uh, we have very few problems with this machine uh, I had to replace one chip to get it working. It was one single chip in the current address register of the controller that was broken. Uh, after fixing that, it was passing all the driveless uh, diagnostics and then it also passed uh, drive based diagnostics. So let's run this thing.
first thing is to thread uh, the tape. And the tape looks like this. Three quarter jeans uh, magnetic tape. seems to be building. Loading the monitor system from the deck tape. You see the flicking lights. It indicates the function it's doing from the deck tape controller. is the operating system loaded RT11 SC let's mount another tape on drive one here Okay, let's now copy the tape from uh, drive 0 onto the tape drive 1 here. Uh, first we need to initialize tape drive 1. Of course it has to read the initialization program of the tape. Takes a while. Initialize the tape drive one. So for now, uh, let's copy all of the contents of drive zero onto drive one. Let's see how that looks like. Okay, so now it starts reading, reading in the copying program to memory. Takes a while. panel here you can see what kind of function it performs at this moment so right now it's searching for a uh, block now it has actually started copying here and it start to have now copied the first file uh, starts.com 
from drive zero to drive one. So while it is now copying this, we can have a look at the tape. So this is the deck tape. It's a three quarter inch uh, magnetic tape. Uh, it consists has ten tracks on it, uh, but it actually is five plus five tracks, so they're redundant. Uh, they add the information of tracks uh, already analog, analog signals inside the drive electronics, inside the head. So from a controller point of view, it's only five tracks. The five tracks are three data tracks, and one uh, clock track, and one timing and mark, mark track is called. So the one timing track for the clock track, and one mark track, which indicates which kind of information is on the data tracks, if it's a block number or if it's actual data. Each tape uh, consists of, uh, in the PDF 11, of uh, 578 blocks, and each block has uh, 256 words. In total, it's about 300 kilobytes of uh, data, worth of data. And it's copying here now. Uh, the big tape was originally used on uh, the 12-bit series and the uh, 80-bit series, and also the 36-bit series of uh, digital computers, digital equipment computers. Uh, and that also is reflecting in how the layout of the tape is. So there's three, uh, three tracks and three bits of information parallel, and it's then uh, collected into 18-bit words. So the controller or the system actually works on 18 bits. And in the PDF 11, they have all, all just skip two bits in every word. So in 18 bit system, they use the full, full length of bits. But here we have skip two bits. can see that it, uh, the system is greeting us with a greeting system prompt here, part 11 SC version 5.3. And when it has finished writing, we see the dot. Now we can, for example, do a dear on VT0. So what the contents of this is. to be patient with this kind of mass storage. It takes a while just to get the direct listing. So here you see the contents of the copied tape. It contains the rd11se.sys system, system files, a basic interpreter, uh, a number of uh, device drivers and some other uh, utility programs like PIP, UP, resource, directory, etc. Okay, so I think that this concludes this uh, short demonstration of the system. We have uh, showed the TU56 tape drive together with the TC11 uh, controller and the PDP1105 computer running RT11SE operating system. Thank you very much for viewing.